Good evening. How are y'all tonight? Um, okay, so I think this is round four, part of history of cannabis. And I was going to hit straight on terpenes tonight, but I think I've decided to ease back just a little bit. Terpenes and cannabinoids got a little bit micro, and I think I want to stay a little bit macro. What I do want to point out um, that I feel like I miss a lot, I am passionate about science just because I love science does not mean that you have to love science. So I try going to try very hard to keep this just to the basics of what you need to know and maybe just a little bit more, but I'm going to skip through and kind of generalize a lot of things about the plants, but just highlight what makes it really cool. So um, we'll come to terpenes probably next time, terpenes and cannabinoids. But um, what I really get excited about is CBD and essential oils. CBD is the essential oil of a plant. And what I want to find a way to impart is what I have grown in to understand about CBD and essential oils. I know that there are skeptics. I know that there are cynics and I don't blame you one bit because I was exactly in your shoes when I began. I still am one. I think it's important to ask the questions, to do your research, to form your own opinion, to ask why, to ask how, um, and you don't have to trust what everybody says. I think it's important to do the research um, so that you understand for yourself exactly what you're getting into. But I laugh and I say that I'm getting crunchier and crunchier as I age, but it's totally true. The more I learn, the cleaner I want to be in my entire life. I have a long way to go, but my, um, I want my cleaning agents to be clean. I want my food to be clean. I want my skincare. I want all of it to be clean down to my medicine, because the more you learn, the more you ask really big questions of what the heck are we doing to our bodies? So, um, I know that I have a long way and I'm going to break this down to keep it from going too long. But back in the nineties, when I was in high school, I remember a friend was really into vitamins and they were healing and wonderful. And I was a total skeptic. Of course, I never said it, but I thought it was all a sales gimmick. This was right about the time that I was getting, beginning to get sick. I was using antibiotics prescribed by my dermatologist for prophylactic use or preventative use. I had no idea the damage that it was causing to my body. I believed in medicine. I believed in doctors and I trusted everything that they said. I don't think they were trying to steer me wrong. I just think that we have grown and we've learned so much more from the nineties until now. And I had no reason to doubt them. I jumped on the essential oils bandwagon um, when my health struggles lasted too many years with not enough answers from my doctors. I acknowledged that it was a craze, but I was absolutely desperate. I was super sick. I had no idea what was ahead of me and that I was about to get really, really bad before I got any better, but medicine wasn't helping me. It really wasn't. I had doctors that were shaking their heads at me, telling me that I would be on pain medicine for the rest of your life, honey. The kind of pain that I had pain meds didn't even touch. So I was taking this pain medicine and it kind of touched it. It definitely made my head feel better, but it wasn't getting to the root of the problem. I remember the day that I found a pit in my stomach because I realized that my doctors, multiple experts, I went all over the country from big hospitals in the U.S. didn't know what to do with me. They're, they were throwing their hands in the air. I was at Mayo Clinic seeing, quote, the best of the best doctors in the world. And he told me that most people with my severity of disease came to his office in a wheelchair and that if I was on the Oregon Trail, he would bet on me making it to Oregon. That was his go get him tiger. That's, that's how we left. That's how I left it. And I lost my hope. I just knew that Mayo Clinic was the answer. They were going to heal me. They had the answer to my problem. I just had to get myself to Rochester. Um, and I had no answers. I left with nothing. My husband tried to support me. I cried the entire flight home back to Houston, but he was at the same loss. He was so discouraged. So I started researching for myself the first time I really started digging and I started studying up on diet. And that's when I went on a massive diet that while then it was unusual, it was, you know, over 10 years ago, but it's somewhat common. Now we've learned more, right? I just ate lean protein and vegetables and I got incredibly sick. We actually still call it my exorcism by eating well for five days, no sugars, no, um, nothing that turned sugars. Um, I, detox, something awful. It was the first time that I could justify in my head that homeopathic remedies actually worked. And I always had that little sign on my refrigerator that I 
printed out in, in frame that said food can be the worst form of poison or the greatest form of medicine. And for me, it hit the nail on the head. So I learned at that point that my food could actually heal or hurt me. And I had huge improvements. I was able to ease a lot of the pain that I experienced on a daily basis, um, but I still had Crohn's disease. So soon after that, I learned about essential oils and I studied and I researched the same way I did with everything else. And the skeptic in me wanted to know the why I can't take something hoping it works. I want to know why it works. And I want to know how it works by being on immunosuppressants, which is what they put you on with Crohn's disease. I had zero immune system and I had the wackiest things happen to my body, inconvenient, painful, embarrassing, I had horrible things happening to my body. I could spend an entire life telling you all the things that happened when you don't have an immune system to fight off the little things that your body fights off for you every day. How in the world can that be good for you? So I was truly a Petri dish at this point, as I called myself for essential oils. It was all I had left in my arsenal. It was all I had left. My doctors had no answers for me. They were my last hope and they worked. And each time I had an issue, instead of calling the doctor, I looked in my little essential oils Bible and I found what oil worked for what, and I started healing myself. I had bleeding gums, despite being fanatical about brushing and flossing my teeth. And I found an essential oil and my bleeding gums went away, even shocked the heck out of my doctor. I had a painful cyst and I read that lemon oil took away, um, the walls of a cyst. And guess what? I got rid of the cyst without going to the doctor. I understood that my family was so excited for me. They wanted me to get relief from my oils, but it, when it came time for them to need them, oh no, 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 they're not for me, but we're so glad they work for you. They were just as big of skeptics as I was. So it, it, you really don't believe in it until they work for you. And over the years, my husband and my mom, and then my dad became believers because when they needed it and I offered a certain essential oils for them, um, they witnessed a healing moment in their own bodies over and over again. And so now my whole family is believers, of course. So most people who know me know that I have a huge faith, but my interest in essential oils brought about my interest in why Jesus was given frankincense and myrrh. You hear that all the time in the Bible, took it for granted, totally didn't think through it. And I wanted to know why. And I had a friend who introduced me to this book. It's called Healing Oils of the Bible. I love this. I love this book so much. And it's by David Stewart. I write, I've read it. I probably read it three times, as many times as that medical cannabis handbook. But right here, I want to insert that I am not a doctor and I'm coming from a point of humility. I only research for myself to solve my problems or the problems of my friends and family. I am a constant learner and I am simply sharing what I've learned. I have so much to go, but I want to share the basics because most people don't really care to go beyond the basics or better yet, their eyeballs start rolling with science in the same way that my eyeballs start rolling when you talk to me about math. I can't can't stand it. So I am here to help those of you, um, for those of you who help me with math, but the basics make complete sense. I want to approach this life using the Bible as a history book. We all can agree that the Bible is a great resource for telling us how people lived years before Jesus walked on the earth and for years after. And the Bible has hundreds, hundreds of references to essential oils before the scientific method was the golden rule. Humankind used every part of plants. We use their seeds, their resin, their bark, their leaves, and oils for healing. We used it for aromatics. We used it for spirituality. We know all of this because this is written in the Bible and other important documents that have been recovered from that time. The Apocrypha, which is in the Old Testament of the Catholic Bible, was written between 300 BC and 100 AD. And there are other books written between 200 BC and 600 AD that reference, that give us an idea as to how people lived then on a daily basis. And this teaches us how plants were used before pharmaceuticals came along, before the pill that you could pop, and before hospitals. If you ever noticed that people didn't go to hospitals back in Bible times, they went to churches to get healed. Essential oils are called essential because they're necessary for the lifeblood of the plant. They contain the essence. That's where essential comes from, the essence of the plant. So while we view them from a perspective of how they can help us, the oils are actually vital to the life and the processes of the actual plant. God created the plants with as much intricacy as he created human beings and animals. It's truly fascinating. Plants have parts for protection. Think 
cactus uh, for self-preservation, think succulents, to prevent bugs from eating them, think herbs um, with, with strong scents and odors. Every plant is created intelligently. It is truly remarkable. To me, the detail that the plants um, have, and as a believer, I believe those plants are smart because God created them and he created them for Adam and Eve and for you and for me, because he left Adam and Eve in a garden, not in a lean to or in a TP or in a shelter. He didn't plant a CVS on the corner by the fig tree and the apple tree. Their life was perfect in the garden full of aromatic flowers. And the Bible tells us that he gave them everything they needed. Can you just imagine everything they needed? And this refers back to a quote that I've actually referred to before in one of our previous things that says, um, all, thing, all of the things that endocannabinoids do are exactly what Adam and Eve would want after being thrown out of Eden. You couldn't design a more perfect drug for getting Eve through the pain of childbirth and Adam through to endure a and an to endure a life of physical toil. In other words, cannabinoids help us to cope with the human condition. That's just fascinating. So going on to the science, essential oils are tiny, teeny, weeny, weeny, weeny molecules. 500 AMU is what they called. AMU means atomic mass units that can penetrate into every single teeny weeny cell in our body. You have to understand how microscopic that is including passing the blood brain barrier, which that in itself is enormous. Modern medicine um, actually uses, my son uh, has ADD and they told us, you know, we can, if we could just pass the blood brain barrier, we could cure so many diseases. We could cure Alzheimer's. We could cure all these things because they can't get things to pass, pass the blood brain barrier. Well, modern medicine uses breast milk breast milk passes the blood brain barrier. So for this ADD pill that my son takes with fish oil, it's combined with breast milk because the breast milk carries the fish oil across the blood brain barrier, which is enormous, an enormous discovery. But guess what? Essential oils cross the blood brain barrier. So they can do everything and more, which is why CBD is getting such rave reviews about seizures and Alzheimer's and all these neurologic conditions because we're passing the blood brain barrier with CBD. Um, this is important to note that fatty oils that we use to cook with like olive oil or canola oil, those are not essential oils. They have molecules that are much too large to get into our human cells. They're over a thousand AMU compared to 500. AMU. So they're twice the size. They're big fat globules. So using the Bible as a history book, essential oils were inhaled. They were used topically and orally by everyone during Bible times. Their benefits are referenced physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually throughout the Bible and other resources from the day. Current medicines are manufactured by man. They lack carbon, which means they're inorganic. Carbon means organic. Um, no carbon means inorganic. They don't have life force that a plant has. That's what it means to be organic. And therefore, because they don't have that life force, they don't have the intelligence of a plant, such as photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, a plant is smart enough that it knows how to create its own food. Have we always taken that for granted? I sure did. I learned about photosynthesis, but it never dawned on me how smart plants are that they can actually feed themselves. So every medication that is man-made has a side effect. And we know the list when we hear them on commercials, it lists a thousand things. And I work in a skilled nursing home and I see it every day. Patients who start off taking one medication and another to help with the side effects. And then they have a handful of medicine before they know it because they're all to offset certain side effects of, um, that make things uncomfortable. And maybe things like constipation, or it may be things like ulcers, but they take medications to offset side effects. Um, that's why we have doctors. Medicine can be dangerous. And when mixed with the wrong medication or when it's taken improperly, we need skilled chemists. We need um, a large knowledge. We need a nar large knowledge base to uh, supervise the use of our medications so we don't kill ourselves. We're ultimately taking chemicals. We need chemists who know how, to, how those chemicals work together. And this we've learned with opiate use, actually. Medicines are not made to heal y'all. This is kind of an aha moment for me, I would say over the last year. Um, medications are made to be on for life and you get caught in this vicious cycle. Me, I'm on thyroid medicine. Do you know what it does? 
I have to take it for the rest of my life. I will never be off thyroid medicine. Um, and I have been told that because my thyroid is now dead, I will always be on it. So medicines are created for big pharma. It's made to make money. They're made, it's a business for profit. So to keep you coming back, not to heal you. And that is a very hard truth. And that is kind of an eye-opening moment when you think about medications, pain medications, pain meds don't heal you. They mask something. You don't go to the root of the problem and solve it. You are trying to mask a certain situation, which is my situation. When I had Crohn's, I took um, something to decrease the activity of my immune system because I have an overactive immune system. But by doing that, it caused all sorts of other problems because I need my immune system. Who doesn't need their immune system to survive? So I'm not sure where to insert this disclaimer, so I will now, but antibiotics truly saved my life. They did. I'm eternally grateful to Alexander Fleming, who invented penicillin, the very first antibiotic, and set us on the trajectory for antibiotic use. But I was on 10 IV antibiotics at once to fight the sepsis in my body. So I'm not here to dog Western medicine. I'm not anti-medication. I believe in it, and it saved me. And I wanted saving. I was not about to refuse antibiotics. But on the flip side, I also believe that the overuse of that long term low dose antibiotic that I used in high school prophylactically for my skin um, contributed to all my health issues starting when I was a junior in high school. Um, yeah. So there's that. I believe that it contributed to it. I may have had a bad gene in my body, but I think that that imbalance. Um, and the bacteria in my gut is what ultimately caused my problems. So compare that to essential oils. They don't have serious side effects. When essential oils are used, they work together in harmony versus working against each other, which we'll get to this point, but we call that the entourage effect. When um, the use of oils together actually have a greater benefit than using a single oil. They don't cause harmful drug interactions like synthetic drugs. We don't have to have the supervision of a doctor to use them. I've always admired the Native American culture and how they knew plants and they knew which plant was for what healing. When using essential oils, you don't get addicted or stuck using oils for life because they embody a healing power. They embody that lifeblood, that carbon, that God made healing. They know how to heal what needs to be healed. Essential oils were everything in this world. They were everything in this world, much longer than pharmaceuticals were ever invented. And their use has been referenced in Arabia and Lebanon and Persia and Babylon and Southeastern Europe. We talked about this before, Egypt, Libya, Africa, India, um, Indonesia, China, the list goes on. And remember, cannabis was actually in the United States, pharmacopoeia, which is the big bad book of medications until 1938. They, it was dispensed with scripts being written for healing until big pharma came along the cash cow, the money machine. They wanted to there. Here's this one, uh, cannabis that can solve so many problems, but then they wanted big pharma to come along so they can give us all these different medications and make much more money, um, on multiple products rather than using a, a one for all. Oils were used back in the day in the, of the Bibles for worship, and they're still used today. Catholic churches, I know, to be spiritually uplifting. I know when my grandmother, who was buried, her priest waved frankincense over her burial. 70% of the Bible mentions, books in the Bible, mention essential oils, their uses, and plants where they came from. This book right here that I love so much, this book says that the Bible makes reference to over 1,035 essential oils, 33 species of herbs and trees. So as the history book, we know that essential oils were used in abundance and on a regular basis. One of my favorite verses is Ezekiel 47, 12. It says their fruit will be used for food and their leaves for healing. So we were, God created these plants for us to use to eat and also for healing. But by eating these plants, we should also be getting the healing effects in our body, which is what's happened to us and to our diet. What's not in our diet, what is in our diet, what pesticides are causing to our food, or um, there, there's so many factors involved, of course, as we know about our foods right now. These are things that we should be eating, and they're supposed to be keeping us healthy, and we're not eating them, and we're deficient. 
So plants are not only to be used for nutrition, but also for healing. The Bible references plant oils such as olive oil, almond, and flaxseed being used for fuels and for aromatic essential oils for flavor, perfumes, incense, embalming. They were also referred to for emotional release, for mental clearing, spiritual upliftment, physical healing, and the prevention of disease, as we've talked about. The word anoint, we hear that in the Bible a lot. Once again, something I just breezed over and thought it was old timey, but the word anoint shows up in the Bible a lot. And what it means is to massage or to rub with oil. So healing oils referenced in the Bible, they said they would be anointed by oils by um, the, at the church that um, they include aloe and cassia and cypress, galbanum, frankincense, cedar wood, spikenard, myrrh. There's so many oils that we use to anoint our bodies, to heal our bodies. The birth of the scientific method started between five to 600 years ago, and people began to look for answers to life questions for the very first time outside of the church. It was always in the church. So for hundreds of years, people went to the church to get anointed and to get healed. They didn't have hospitals. They didn't have anything of the sort. They went to the church to get healed. Healing came from the church. So when the scientific method came about, culture became more secular, and we began to ease away from the church for our dependence on health and healing and putting less faith in God made solutions and more dependence in man-made solutions. So to bring it all together and my passion for CBD, the hemp plant was created by God with specific purposes in mind. We're almost done. Cannabidiol, which is long for CBD, is one of more than a hundred unique cannabinoid compounds that are found in the oily resin. The resin is in the plant of the cannabis plant. The gooey resin is concentrated in the clusters of the cannabis flowers, which are covered by tiny little trichomes. It's what make the trichomes are what make when it's blooming, what makes it look like frost is on top of the um, the plant. It looks really like you just want to just go up and eat it. Trichomes are specialized structures that contain many oily medicinal compounds, including CBD, THC, and various other terpenes, which we're coming to. We'll get to that in, a, in another video. But the mushroom-shaped tri trichomes protect the plant from heat and ultraviolet radiation. So that's helping the plant while it's growing. The oil also has antifungal, antibacterial, and an insecticidal properties that deter predators from the plant while it's growing. The stickiness of the resin provides another defensive layer by trapping bugs that are trying to eat the plant. And the same oily resin that protects the health of the plant includes components that are beneficial for human health found in CBD oil. So all these pieces that God has designed in this plant, cannabis, is not only good for the um, longevity of the plant, but it's good for the longevity and the health of the human being. So there you have it. Plants make incredibly intricate design Plants have incredibly intricate designs to protect them in the wild, but at the same design and benefits used to protect itself can also be used to benefit the human body. And why is that? Because they are intelligently and incredibly supernaturally made by God for our purposes of nutrition and healing. Is this not so exciting? The way that plants and humans and healing, it's, it's like a jigsaw puzzle and how they work together. Like this gets me on the edge of the seat. And I just find it fascinating how everything on this earth is absolutely orchestrated for what seems to be a very simple purpose, yet at the same time, a much greater, more intricate purpose. The fact that I have never thought about the tiny detail of a plant and why each are so different blows my mind. They each serve a God-given purpose. So that's the end of this one. The next slide, we're going to address how and why oils can heal, probably get into a little bit more about cannabinoids and terpenes, which are specific parts of the cannabis plant and how they truly are a part of the essential oil of the plant that is being used for healing. Y'all share this video, share it with people who want to know why CBD works. I think that if we were all to take CBD oil on a daily basis, like a vitamin, we would have so much healing in our society. What we're gonna look like, those of us who have jumped on this wagon in 10 years, we are going to be so much more healthy. It is a chronic anti-inflammatory and the root of all disease is inflammation. So if we can prevent that inflammation on a daily basis, that ultimately prevents the development 
or progression of any sort of inflammatory disease, we are going to be so much more healthier because of it. Was that, was that proper English? So I just want y'all to know that doing CBD, learning about CBD, following me on CBD, you do not have to know all the science in order to share CBD. I just like it because I'm fascinated by it and I love to share what I've learned. But if you're interested at all in climbing on the CBD wagon, that is what we're here for. I, there are people who don't know anything about science. There are people like me who know nothing about sales. We are one big happy family and we would love to have you join our team and our family. The Green Compass community is amazing. We really set the bar high for the gold standard of what CBD oil should be as far as purity and ethics with the company um, and just top, I call it top tier, top shelf CBD. So I hope you have a great night. Talk to you later.